experiment with only two outcomes is not really that interesting. You can flip a coin with each having a probability of half and only two outcomes. You can roll a die and check to see if you roll a four or not. That's only two outcomes. It gets much more interesting when you repeat the experiment. An experiment with exactly two outcomes is called a binomial trial. We're going to label one of the outcomes as success and the other as failure. This may not correspond with our normal notions for these words. In general, we want to look for a certain number of successes in a fixed number of trials. So let's take a look at an example. In 10 flips of a coin, how likely is it that we flip 6 heads? Our success will be flipping a head, and failure is going to be flipping a tail. In our 10 coin flips, we need 6 of them to be heads, so we're going to be able to choose 6 out of the 10 to be our heads. The rest are going to be filled out as tails. How many ways can we choose 6 to be heads? Well, with 10 slots, there are C10-6, or 10 choose 6 ways of actually doing this. So now we know which ones are heads and which ones are tails, because we've chosen them. Now we need to fill out the probabilities. So each of the heads, there's a 1 in 2 chance that I actually got that to be a head. And for each of the tails, again, there's a 1 in 2 chance that I get each of these to be tails. We can use the multiplication principle, because all of these are independent events, to try to figure out what the full probability is. It's going to be the number of ways I can put it in this combination, so C10-6, times the number of successes I have, 1 half to the 6th, times the number of times I get tails, 1 half to the 4th. Putting all these numbers together, we have C10-6, which is 210, and then 1 half raised to the 10th power, which when you compute the decimal, it's 0.205. <laughs> If I want to roll a six-sided die eight times, how likely is it that you roll exactly two fours? We do this exactly the same type of way. We call success rolling a four and failure not rolling a four. Then we know what the probability distribution of this looks like. We have a one in six chance and a five in six chance that we roll a four and not roll a four. So again, we have these eight slots that we want our die rolls to go into. We want two of them to be fours. So out of the eight, we have C82 ways of choosing which two are going to be fours. Once we know where the fours are, the rest will be failures, so we can label them like this. Then each of their probabilities are given by our distribution. A one in six chance we roll a four, a five in six chance we get a failure, or we don't roll a four. So similar to the last one, we can multiply all these together using the multiplication principle to figure out what the full probability is. The probability that we get exactly two fours will be C82, times 1 out of 6 raised to the second power, there are two copies of 1 sixth there, times 5 out of 6 raised to the sixth power, because there are six copies of it there. You multiply these out and you get the decimal, and it's 0 0.2605, about a 26% chance. <laughs> To come up with a general formula, we're going to assume that the probability of success is p and the probability of failure is q. So we know that p plus q has to equal 1 because of the way this is set up. Then we're going to repeat the experiment n times and we're looking for k successes. If you follow along with the previous examples, then you know that the probability that you get k successes is going to be cnk times p raised to the k power times q raised to the n minus k power. n minus k plus k adds up to n, so we make sure we get all of the trials in. To illustrate this, let's look at an example. Alexa hits free throws at a 70% rate. If she shoots 20 free throws, how likely is it that she misses 8 of the free throws? To set this up, we need to talk about our successes and our failures, and we're looking for her missing 8 free throws. So we'll set up our 8 to be our success. In other words, success really is that she missed a free throw, even though this seems strange. Then failure is going to be her hitting a free throw. And we're looking for her to have 8 successes, which is 8 misses. The probability of success is going to be the opposite of this, which will be 30% or 0.3. The probability of failure is 70% or 0.7, because that's how much she actually hits. Then, as I said, we're looking for 8 successes. So according to the formula, 
this is going to be our k. We have 20 trials, which is n, and 8 um, successes we're looking for. That's our k. Our probability of success is 0.3, which is p, and 0.7 is our q. So our probability is c28 times 0.3 to the 8 times 0.7 to the 12, which is 20 minus 8. To compute the decimal, we plug all this in, and we end up with 0.114 or an 11.4% chance that she misses 8 free throws. Our last example is a little bit more complicated. In a survey, it's found that 29% of respondents like the character Jar Jar Binks from Star Wars Episode 1. If 6 people are selected at random, how likely is it that at least 2 people like Jar Jar Binks? This number is higher than you might think. So we need to label success as the thing we're looking for which in this case is people liking Jar Jar Binks, as strange as that might seem. So the probability a randomly selected person likes Jar Jar is 0.29. The probability of failure is the opposite, or 0.71, 1 minus 0.29. In this now, we're looking for at least two successes. So what does this mean? Whenever you see the words at least, that means we have multiple cases, and so we want two or three successes, or four, or five, or six. It's much easier to look at the complement, which is zero successes or one success. This is much fewer things to compute. So we can use our formula to compute the probabilities for each of these cases, and then we would add them together because of the or. For zero, it's c60 times 0.29 to the zero times 0.71 to the six. For one, it's c61 times 0.29 to the one times 0.71 to the fifth, because 1 plus 5 is 6. When we compute these out, we end up with a probability. In this case, it's 0 0.00933. To find our actual probability, then, we're looking for a complement. So the probability of at least two successes is going to be 1 minus the probability we just found, 1 minus 0 0.00933, which ends up being 0 0.99067.